The author left Ravu with Daniel and Seton to go to Kalash to do Kora. Lamo gifted the author a sheepskin coat. Seton took a shortcut to get off to Changtang, towards Mount Kalash. Hills of Ravu gave way to open plains, where some gazelles would look up nibbling pastures. As hills started to come up, drachbas would wave at the car. Their sheep would run away. The car passed nomads' dark tents. Black Tibetan mastiffs were standing guard. They'd run at the car. The breed was popular in China's imperial courts, brought to Silk Road as tribute from Tibet. They entered a valley where a wide icy river went along the trail. The turns became sharper. The track moved away from the river. There were rocks, below which snow clung. Suddenly Seddon stopped. A swath of snow laid on the trail. He began scattering dirt over it. Nick and Daniel too joined him. They were at 5,120 meters. Ten minutes later, there was snow again, but this time, Seddon drove over and went upslope. At 5,400 meters, Arthur's head began to throb. He drank water. At the top of the pass, 5,515 meters, there was a cairn of rocks, decorated by silk scarves and prayer flags. Set an unscrewed petrol tank. Arthur's headache cleared. At 2 o'clock, they stopped for lunch. They ate hot noodles in a canvas tent, part of a work camp, erected beside a dry salt lake. The plateau was pockmarked, with salt flats, brackish lakes, and vestiges of Tethys Ocean. At Hoare, Daniel left to Lhasa. They stopped at a tire shop. There were two punctures. Hoare was a miserable place with no vegetation. It was unfortunate since it was on the shore of Lake Manasarovar. Hindu and Buddhist cosmology pinpoints Mansarovar, as source of the Indus, Ganges, Sutlej and Brahmaputra. Seton told the author to drink tea at Hoare's only cafe. A Chinese youth served him. Thirty minutes later, they drove towards Mount Kalash. The author's experience at Hoare was different from the earlier travelers. Akai Kawaguchi, a Japanese monk when saw the lake, burst into tears. After some years, it had similar effect on Sven Hadin. At 10.30 they reached a guesthouse in Darchan. It was a troubled night for the author. It was 4,670 meters. His one nostril was blocked. He woke abruptly. His chest felt heavy. He stayed awake. Next morning. Seton took him to Darchan Medical College, which looked like a monastery. The Tibetan doctor declared it cold in effect if altitude, gave him a five-day medicine course. Seton returned to Lhasa. He told author that his death didn't matter, but it would be bad for his business. Darchan didn't look horrible. It was dusty. But Himalayas were visible, commanded with the mountain, Gurla Mandhada. The town had rudimentary general stores selling cigarettes, soap etc. and strings of prayer flags. The author didn't see any pilgrims. Perhaps he was too early. One afternoon, he sat in Darchan's only cafe. He didn't want to do the Kora alone. Then he met Norbu, a fat visitor. The author felt happy, when he came to know that Norbu also was going to do the Kora. Norbu told that they would hire a yak for their luggage. Norbu had no intention of prostrating, lying down, during the journey. As his tummy was too big. Subscribe for more videos.